Let me honorably invite Honorable Dr. Abu Sakara. Thank you, Captain. Fellow comrades, yesterday I was called very late in the evening and told that uh, there will be a, an event today and I should come and give a few comments. Um, I wasn't going to accept until I found out what the event was about. And I said, in that case, I cannot absent myself. But the effect of that is... The effect of that is that I've not had time to prepare a nice speech, uh, you know, so I have not eliminated politically incorrect phrases that I will say and cause a boom, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so I'm speaking from my heart. And today, to mark the stain of Kwame Nkrumah's demise, I've heard a lot, and I want to thank Professor Anochi once again uh, for his eloquent and deep incited knowledge of the events related to Kwame Nkrumah. But there's one thing I picked up which I want to make a statement about. Kwame Nkrumah was not killed by cancer. He was not killed by poison. He was killed by betrayal of the people he loved most. After six failed coup attempts in this country, Kwame Nkrumah fell to the demise of yet another betrayal. And we think that it is only Kwame Nkrumah that we betrayed. We betrayed our whole future. As we have been doing since the year 3150 BC at the Battle of Tundubi, when the Africans were marshaled up against the invading Moroccans. That was the beginning of the crumbling of the African Empire. And what happened there? Sorry, uh, Tundibi is 1591. The first one was 3150, where Menes, called Nama, managed to unite Lower and African Egypt, which became the first global power. That was the glory of our days. But after that, our subsequent civilizations fell prey to this same betrayal, the most significant of which happened at the Battle of Tundubi, when against smaller forces that they were about to rout, their battle strategy of driving the cattle through them before they came in order to overcome the cannons was betrayed by Africans themselves. So that when the cattle were amassed in front of them, they fired the cannons. So the cattle turned around and rather rattled, uh, uh, rumbled through our own army. That was the first betrayal. There were subsequent betrayals. But the betrayal of 1966 is another example of Africa at the precipice of building to become a global power. And yet that dream was again betrayed. Not by anybody, but by ourselves. Even through the colonial period, none of the victories of the colonialists would have been successful if the Africans had decided to come together and fight them. But in every single colonial battle that we lost, the Africans fighting against the Africans were more than the Europeans fighting against the Africans. That should tell you something, that that betrayal is deep-seated. And until we put an end to this betrayal, we shall continue on the path that we are. So today, the inspiration provided by Professor Anoche's speech, the knowledge and the insights that he's provided, are not just to remind us of the past and to eulogize Kwame Nkrumah and to honor him. You and me cannot add one more honor to Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. His honor is complete. And his victory is complete. And I even want to say that on another day like this, if we're wearing black, we're wearing it for ourselves. It's because of what we have lost by not having him. It's not because of him. He has already triumphed.
he has already triumphed both in the physical and in the spiritual world so on another day like this we should wear white to mark his triumph and I want to come to our present day we know what we have lost from losing Kwame Nkrumah in fact we in Ghana don't even appreciate it if you want to know what we have lost go to other African countries they are the ones who will tell you what they have lost by losing Kwame Nkrumah sometimes they are even shocked when they come to Ghana and see the way we regard Kwame Nkrumah they say is this in Kwame Nkrumah's own hometown that people are saying these things about him they cannot believe it when they have days where they honor Kwame Nkrumah the OAU they honor him African Union they honor him they come to Ghana and they don't see that happening and they wonder why is this and it's because we are gradually forgetting and that is why people like Professor Anochi are important because they need to remind us and the reminding is not just that we will bask in the glory of our forefathers but that our spirit will be rekindled so that we take upon the task that is for our generation that task is more important than anything else when we all look at this mausoleum we see a half completed journey and we want to rest under the shadow of it, sit near our far fa father and cry that is not the purpose of it the purpose for of it is for you to look up and dream what you can build on top of that edifice and if I had my way I would make sure that every brick brick that went on top of that was made out of gold so that there would be a gleaming gold tower in Ghana more than anywhere else people would see that the wealth of this country is going to be invested in the wealth of our youth the weight of that tower alone can be calculated and put in our central bank it will show the value of our currency up by more than whatever we are doing now because everybody is busy trying to get Africa's gold to go and show up their currency because the day of paper currency is coming to an end sooner or later everybody is going to have to prove the value of their currency and we who are sitting on gold are the ones whose paper currency is weakest whilst other people are taking our gold to go and show up their currency and that betrayal hasn't stopped because again when Gaddafi came up with this idea once again he was quickly sabotaged because that is too dangerous an idea so I want to plead with you especially do you those in the younger generation that today is not a day for you to sit in the shade of your forefathers basking in their glory today is for you to take up the challenge of the future ahead what you have you need and what you need you have you need the inspiration which has been provided for us you need the knowledge to be aware of the dangers which has been provided for us more importantly you need to know of the sacrifice that is demanded from you the example of Dr. Kwame Nkrumah is the sacrifice of an individual for a nation and that you must make there can be no success without any sacrifice so be prepared for your duty be prepared that discipline must accompany you and we be prepared that at the end of the day we will continue to be guided by that torch which he held aloft long after he's dead and gone it is still providing us guidance so I want to thank you very much for this opportunity and I want to thank again the panel especially Professor Anochi for his words of inspiration and of course my good friend Captain Smart and our a uh, young man over there from Republic Hall. He's done well. I'm very proud of you. Well done. Yes, sir.